Hi! In this video we are going to create an interoperable master format package IMF in DaVinci Resolve for Netflix. First, we are going to explain briefly why we need to export an IMF and then we are going to create our first IMF package in Resolve. Why does Netflix use IMF as their master in format? The content that we create and deliver to Netflix will be watched by people all over the world. Netflix might ask for multiple versions to be able to do so. Examples are branded versions and non-branded versions, alternative language versions and textless deliveries. You can imagine that this can add up quite quickly. The content delivered will also go through inspections and quality controls during the delivery stage. This can lead to redelivery requests to make sure that the content meets the highest quality. The concept of IMF allows Netflix to be flexible in different versions and through redeliveries. IMF packages are built upon each other. The first IMF package created is called a complete IMF package. Packages that are built from this complete IMF package are called supplemental IMF packages. A supplemental IMF package can reuse MXF synthesis from previous packages and can contain new MXF synthesis for changes between packages. Created versions via supplemental packages allow us to only redeliver changes and update. These supplemental packages save human and machine resources and time. Only the changes are QC'd and stored. IMF is designed to facilitate the management and processing of multiple content versions. If you would like to know more about the concept of IMF and the different components, please see this video. Let's see how we can create an IMF package for Netflix using DaVinci Resolve. Let's create a new project with the name of IMF package. Then we need to set up our resolution and frame rate of our project. An IMF delivery for Netflix should be in the native frame rate of the project. To set this up, we need to open the project settings, press Shift 9, or go to the small icon that looks like a gear wheel in the bottom right side of the interface. Inside the project settings, we will check the resolution and frame rate in the master settings menu. In this case, our project has a resolution of 3840 by 2160 and a frame rate of 23976. The IMF package that we will create will be display referred. Therefore, we have to correctly set up our output color space and accurately map the color in our output display. For that purpose, let's move to the color management menu. We will select YRGB as the color science and we are going to check use separate color space and gamma. In DaVinci Resolve, when we are using YRGB as the color science, the timeline color space option will modify our output color space. Currently, we have a Rec. 709 and 2.4 gamma. This will be the correct setting if we will create an SDR IMF package. In this case, our video display master, BDM, was rendered in HDR ST2084, also known as PQ, in a P3 color space with a D65 white point. To output the correct color space of our project, we are going to select P3 D65 and the gamma as ST2084 for the transfer function. If this is your graded project, you can actually create an IMF from it instead of creating a BDM first. Be sure to verify the ODT. If you did it in ACES and you want to learn more about this configuration, click on the link in the description. Now we are going to scroll down a little. We are going to check Enable Dolby Vision. This button will enable the internal content mapping unit or the Dolby Vision panel inside the color page of DaVinci Resolve and will allow us to embed Dolby Vision metadata in our IMF. In the following options, we are going to select the Dolby Vision metadata. This can be version 4 or 2.9. Netflix accepts both Dolby Vision format, in our case is 4.0. 
This selection will depend on the Dolby vision used by the colorist in the Dolby analysis. If you don't know which one was, you can find the version in the Dolby Vision XML. Finally, make sure that the project settings are in line with the XML. Otherwise, you won't be able to import the Dolby Vision metadata. Please always check the latest recommend tool versions via this link. Now we need to tell Resolve what mastering display has been used during grading. This information can be also found in the Dolby Vision XML file. In this case, we are going to select 1000 nits, P3D65, ST2084 full. This metadata will be embedded in the IMF and will be used for content mapping. If you want to know more about the Dolby Vision metadata, click on the link in the description. It is time to import some files. Let's move to the Media tab. In the media tab, go to the media storage to find the folders with the files we are going to use in our exercise. Here we see two folders, one with the name of BDM and the other one with the audio tracks. Let's drag our bins from the media storage under the master bin in the media pool. We now want to open our BDM folder and verify the metadata that is embedded in the files via the metadata menu at the top right of the interface. This shows us that we have a TIFF image sequence that matches with our resolution and frame rate we said before. If you have questions about how to export a Video Display Master or BDM, click on the link in the description. Now let's move to the edit page. On the edit page, you are going to right click on the video in the media pool and select Create new timeline using selected clip. In the timeline name, we are going to write OLB underscore training underscore IMF. OLB means original language version and represent our complete IMF package. Let's hit create. If you want to know more about IMF terminology, click this link. Now we see the video in the timeline. The reason that the colors look flat on our computer monitor is that our source color space is P3D65 ST2084 and our display is Rec709. We are going to create a complete IMF package for a Netflix original. This version will contain the Netflix branding card at the start, therefore this is called a branded version. This Netflix branding could be something like a Netflix original series. To correctly deliver these files, we have to add some components into the timeline. At the beginning, one second of black and silence. Then, four seconds of the Netflix presentation card. Then, one second of black and silence. Then, the full program with picture and sound and at the end of the program, another second of black and silence. If you want to know more about branded and non-branded content, click this link. As you see, our timeline has the second of black at the beginning. Then the Netflix presentation card. Then another second of black. And if we move to the end of the timeline, we have another second of black. Make sure to conform your timeline to the Netflix expects and always verify the duration of the elements before going forward. Now our video track is ready. Before adding the audio channels, let's think about the two scenarios that can happen. The first scenario will be that the audio departments deliver a multi-channel file that include a 5.1 mix and a stereo mix. If this is the case, we can move them immediately to our timeline. The second scenario is that an audio department sends us discrete audio tracks and we have to link them into 5.1 and 2.0 track. This is our case. We have two different methods to create multi-channel audio tracks based on discrete audio channels in DaVinci Resolve. Let's look at them. Let's open the audio bin in the media pool. Then the 5.1 subbin, and here we are going to find the audio files. It might be easier to view the file names in the media pool by switching from the thumbnail view 
to the list view. Now let's drag these files to the timeline in the correct order. Left, right, center, low frequencies effects, left surround, and right surround. After adding them, it is essential to verify that the audio files are aligned with the video. If they are not with the correct duration, make sure to trim them. In the timeline, you can see that the first audio track is set as a stereo 2.0 track. We will need to change that to mono. Right click in the track and select change track type 2 and then select mono. Now we will have 6 mono audio tracks in our timeline. With the audio files inside the timeline, we are going to move to the Fairlight page. Inside the Fairlight page, we are going to select the 6 audio channels and in the Fairlight menu at the top of the interface, we are going to choose the option Link Groups. Inside this menu, we will select the audio channels and at the bottom right next to Link As, we will hit the 5.1 preset. This will create the correct channel mapping for Netflix. Let's move to the edit page and open the mixer at the right part of the interface. Here, we can verify if our audio 5.1 track is working. Also, we can see that our tracks now have the correct layout. Now, let's try the second method, the fastest one but this option is enabled since the 17 version of Resolve. Let's right click at the bottom left part of the timeline and select Act Track. Inside this option select Stereo. Now we notice that we have a stereo audio track. We are going to right click on the track and select Convert to Linked Group. We will immediately see that we have two different audio tracks for the left and right channel. Based on this information, we just need to drag the corresponding audio channels from the media pool to the two audio tracks in the timeline in the correct order. And we need to trim them, since IMF requires that all track files must have the same exact duration. And that's it. We have now created a 5.1 and a stereo track using two different methods. Feel free to use the one you prefer. Also, it is recommended to play the timeline to check that our audio tracks are in sync. In our case, we have a two-pop sound at the beginning of our audio tracks. Let's check if all of them are in sync. After check them, we need to trim the two-pop sound. First, let's lock the video track since we don't want to affect anything in the video. Then, we need to move the playhead after the two-pop sound. And finally, in the Trim menu at the top of the interface, select Trim Start in order to trim the first part of our audio tracks. Now our timeline has a gap at the beginning of the audio tracks, but don't worry about it. Resolve will fill this segment with silence in our export. Finally, you can notice that in our case we have the 5.1 above the stereo track, but the order does not matter for the creation of the IMF. The next step is to add Dolby Vision metadata to our project. There are two options. You can create the metadata from scratch in Resolve, but this will require your colorist to do so. In our case, we will just import the Dolby Vision metadata through an XML that our colorist has provided to us. If you haven't done the analysis, you can learn how to make it on the link in the description. Let's move to the color page and open the Dolby Vision panel we previously enabled in the project settings. We need to be sure that the Dolby Vision metadata version matches the project settings before importing it, as we learned before. If we have another version, the metadata will not be imported. In our case, we select Dolby Vision 4.0 metadata. To import the metadata, let's click in the Options menu in the Dolby panel and select Import Metadata from XML. Inside the Finder, we will navigate to the folder where we have the XML previously created, and we will click Open. As soon as we import the metadata, we notice that the viewer's color looks different. 
That's because the mapping to our display is already happening. If you don't see any change, be sure that inside the Dolby Vision panel, Enable Tone Mapping Preview is checked. And in the Tone Map Using option is select Import Metadata. We recommend playing the timeline to check that the Dolby Vision metadata is correctly mapped into our sequence. Make sure that the metadata is in sync with the picture. You can verify this by checking some of the picture cuts and check for flash frames. With our Dolby metadata correctly import, we are ready to move to the deliver page. In the render settings section, we will select the IMF Netflix custom preset. It is good to mention that Netflix does not require a naming convention for IMF packages. However, if you are looking for guidance on folder naming, Netflix provides some optional best practices here. Next to location, click browse and select the folder where you want to render to. Let's copy in the file name the text we have already created. This information is unique to each show. Project title, season and episode, picture version, we are creating a complete IMF package, creation date, and CPL UUID. The CPL UUID is only available after the package was created, so we have to update the folder name manually afterwards. Now let's focus in the video tab. The IMF Netflix preset already customized the codec setting for us, and we are not able to modify any of the settings. But it is essential to verify that our preset type matches our project resolution and frame rate. In this case, our preset type is Dolby Vision UHD, resolution is 3840 by 2160, and the frame rate is 2397. This is correct, so we can proceed. Additionally, you could add multiple metadata fields in the picture tab. By default, in the content kind, we have advertisement. Let's change it in the drop-down menu to episode. The other fields are options for your own workflow, since Netflix does not require them. And that's all we need to do in the video tab. Let's move up and click the audio tab. Here we need to correctly route our audio tracks stereo and 5.1 from our timeline into the IMF. By default DaVinci Resolve in the 17 version, we'll know that we have two groups of audio tracks, but we'll only recognize the first one as 5.1. As you can see here, the output track 1 is already assigned to the timeline track 1. But in the output track 2, Resolve is mixing all the audio channels in the timeline into a single mix and join them into a stereo track. But that's not what we need. We want to map the output track 2 to timeline track 2. And now, the output track 2 is using our stereo mix that we create in the timeline. If you are in the 16 version of Resolve, you have to make the last step for both output tracks. Now we will click the Edit Metadata option, and here we can find the multi-channel audio metadata. Be sure to select the right language code of your content, and in the content kind, we will select Primary. The language code will be provided by Netflix. In this case, we are creating an English package. Let's make the same with our output track 2, the stereo mix. That's all we need to do to export an IMF. The process is going to be the same if you export an IMF in an ACES project, but in an RCM project, be sure to tag your video with the correct color space and gamma. Hit Add to Render Queue, and in the Render Queue, start Render. Finally, let's check our IMF package. We will do it first inside DaVinci Resolve, and then in the Finder. In our project, we are going to move to the media page. And in the media storage, let's search for the folder we created. Inside the folder, we should see just one clip. This is our IMF package that contains the audio and video. Also, you can see a small logo that says HDR. This is telling us that we have an IMF HDR package. Let's drag our IMF into the media pool. 
Here we are going to open the metadata menu and we need to check that the information of the file matches with the setting we created in our IMF. In this case, we can see that our IMF is Dolby Vision USD and has eight tracks of audio, exactly as we did. Finally, let's create a timeline with our file. Right click in the clip and select create new timeline using composition playlist. In the name, let's write QC to review and hit create. If you don't see the option create new timeline using composition playlist, will mean that your file is not a valid IMF package. This will create your timeline and a folder in the media pool that contains the actual MXF essences. If you open this folder, you can click on the files to find more technical metadata fields for each MXF essence. And if you want to see even more metadata, you can change in the right part of the media pool from thumbnail to the list view. Now, we can see many parameters of our files, but we can filter for the only ones we need. Let's right click in the darker gray part of the list and we are going to select just the ones we need. Clip name, audio channels, bit depth, input color space, resolution, and bit codec. We can save this layout as a preset to save time in our future QCs. Now let's move to the edit page. Here we need to verify that we have a 5.1 and a stereo mix and that our video is in sync with the audio. We recommend you to do a spot check at the beginning, middle and at the end of the timeline. After checking the IMF in Resolve, let's open the file in the finder to quickly review all the different components. Here we are going to find three MXF files carrying the video, audio 5.1 and 2.0 track, a CPL that will assemble the MXF files on the timeline, a PKL that is a sort of an index of the package that provides a list of all assets within the IMF package, an asset map that provides a mapping between IMF internal UUIIDs and external file name and an OPL which specifies the processing and transcoding instruction required for each distribution format. If you want to understand better the entire flow of the IMF, you can think of something similar as when you are trying to cook some pasta. First, you need a recipe. This recipe is similar to the CPL. Then, you go to a supermarket with a list of ingredients. That list can be a PKL. And finally, you need to find the ingredients in the supermarket. The location of the ingredients inside the supermarket is similar to the asset map. Finally, we need to add the correct name to our IMF folder. Let's open the CPL file in the text edit. Here we will find the CPL UUIID. Let's copy the UUIID and now paste it in the IMF folder name. This will help you to organize your deliveries. Hopefully this video has provided enough information on how to create a complete IMF package. In the next videos we are going to learn how to create the supplements. See you soon.